Welcome to today's sports report. First up, the St. Mary's Primary School has won the first quarter-final match in the NBD Primary School's Boys Football Championship, which was played against the Savan Pai Primary School. St. Mary's Primary won that match four goals to zero. Scoring for the St. Mary's Primary was Devon Filbert with two goals. Shane Parilo and Kima Philip both had one goal each. The last quarter-final match will take place on Wednesday, March 16, between the Grand Four Primary School and the St. Luke's Primary at the Grand Four playing field. That match is scheduled to begin at 2.30 p.m. The semi-finals and the final are expected to take place on March the 22nd. And the Dominica Football Association will kick off two more competitions for the 2015-2016 season. Nine matches are scheduled in the All-Island League beginning on Wednesday with Dr. Daru All-Stars of Petit Savan taking on South City United of Grand Bay at the Pori playing field from 6 p.m. Also on Wednesday in a double header at the Newton Savannah, Digicel Newton Juvenile Academy will come up against Haitian Angels at 5 p.m. to be followed by Buffet State Football Club versus Goodwill All-Stars at 7 p.m. At the Benjamins Park, Woodford Hill will do battle with East Central Young Boys at 5 in the afternoon. On Thursday, Andy Williams Sufria Spartans will take on Ray Charles Point Michel Football Club at the Puri Plain Field at 5 p.m. while in a double header at the Newton Plain Field, Delton United will come up against Daddy Chess Bath Road Ambassadors at 5 p.m. to be followed by ACS Tarish United versus Funkole Classics at 7 p.m. Buster Warner is also set to do battle on Thursday in Dublin as they take on Dublin Football Club from 5 in the afternoon. On Friday, Maho Soccer Strikers will come up against Time Ballers Seinman Middleham United at 6 p.m. at the Newton playing field. The Domlek Women's League was also set to kick off its 2016 season this weekend with four matches on Saturday, but due to unreadiness of a few teams, the opening of the league has been pushed back to next weekend. That was according to the PRO of the DFA, Gerald George. The Mahou Soccer Strikers was set to take on Bombers Starlights at the Benjamins Park, while at the Newton playing field, New Generation Stars were to take on Wood City Strikers. Dive Dominica Harlem United were to take on Bios Trumps and defending champions, New India Goodwill Runners versus South East Stars. And five communities across the island will soon be able to engage themselves in sporting activities after sunset. The communities of Vekas, Tibo, La Plain, Grand Bay and the Jolly Johns Park in Salibia will see their playing fields lit up in approximately four months' time, a project valued at over $700,000. This project is being funded between the Dominican National Lotteries Commission and Solaris Energy Company. Mandra Fagan, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Sports, explains the purpose of the visit to Dominica by the Solar Energy Company. In March of 2015, the government invited the Solaris Energy Company to Dominica to conduct an assessment of playing fields across the island. The main focus of the visit was to assess the present lighting fixtures on the playing fields and to explore the possibility of installing solar powered lights to illuminate these facilities. Surveys were conducted of 24 playing fields island wide. The playing fields which will be lit in this phase are Jolly John, Viecas, Geneva, La Plain, and Thibault. Fagan stated further that this step towards the lighting of playing fields with solar powered energy is in keeping with the government's policy of encouraging the use of renewable energy on the island. All five playing fields will be fully solar powered. The lights used will be solar powered, high intensity sports LED lights, which will be outfitted with battery storage and solar panels, and will carry 200 watt lights, 250 watt solar panels, and 200 AH 12 volt batteries fully attached to steel galvanized poles. 
All materials have been graded for the elements of the Caribbean. And that was Amandra Fagan, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Sports. Again, it is anticipated that this project will be completed within the next four months. Man of the match, John Campbell, snatched a five-wicket haul and then smashed a cameo on beaten half-century as Jamaica Scorpions broke their four-game losing slump in the regional four-day championship with a convincing nine-wicket win over Windward Island Volcanoes. Playing on the final day of the ninth-round contest, Campbell claimed 5 for 106 with his part-time off-spin to send the Volcanoes tumbling for 350 in their second innings. Veteran left-arm spinner Nikita Miller also provided some support, taking four for 90. Set 139 for victory, Scorpions raced to their target of 44.4 overs, with the left-handed John Campbell finishing with a stroke-filled 83 and fellow opener Shakai Thomas scoring 52. Fellow Dominicans Liam Sebastian, Jelani Robinson and Kavim Hodge each made good contributions to the Volcano's score of 350. Jelani Robinson scored 64, Sebastian scored 52, and a solid 45 from Kavim Hodge. Still with cricket, Western is all wrong that Dwayne Bravo will hope that life imitates art, so to speak, following the release of his new track, Champion, ahead of the start of the team's ICC World T20 campaign. The Windies will be looking for their second hold on the title since first claiming it four years ago, and Bravo hopes his tune, which pays tribute to some of the region's top athletes, will serve as motivation. In addition to himself and batting star Chris Gale, who joined the Chalo Chalo singer on stage for an impromptu performance, the song mentions the likes of included West Indian legend Brian Lara, NBA star Michael Jordan, U.S. President Barack Obama, former South African President Nelson Mandela, tennis star Serena Williams, and Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt as being champions. The regional team, number two, ranked in the world behind host India, will open their campaign against England on Wednesday. Here's a sneak preview of Bravo doing a little performance with his new track, Champion. DJ Bravo, DJ Bravo, Champion, 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 Champion. Champion. Everybody knows say Bravo a champion. Champion, 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 champion. Everybody know Chris Gale is a champion. Beanie a champion, Bounty a champion, Marshall is a champion, Bungie is a champion, Pollard is a champion, Lara is a champion, Gale is a champion. Don't forget Michael Jordan, Obama a champion, Mandela a champion, Serena a champion, Wendy a champion, Shelly and a champion, 958, Bolt a champion. Champion, 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 champion. Everybody knows say Bravo a champion. And after facing England on Wednesday, the West Indies will play Sri Lanka on March 20th, South Africa on March 25th, and finish against Afghanistan on March 27th. Darren Sami says there is no pressure on the destructive Chris Gale ahead of the West Indies' first World 2020 match against England. West Indies opener Gale is an all-time leading run scorer in T20 cricket, and the 36-year-old is sure to play a key role in their campaign. Gale scored 20 in the 45-run warm-up loss to India last Thursday and did not bat in the three-wicket victory over Australia. The West Indies captain is confident there is enough talent throughout the batting order, meaning his team will not be solely relying on Gale. It is up to us to set the innings very well and we have one of the most destructive T20 batsmen in the world in Chris, but there is never too much pressure on Chris, Sami said. Chris will do just what he does and done throughout his career. Chris can turn it on whenever he feels like it. We know that Chris is a massive figure, but when you look at the dressing room, we have Edwin Bravo, Andre Russell, Carlos Brafwit, and that's a lot of power, Sami said. And that concludes the Primetime Sport Report for today. For more information on all our stories, feel free to visit our website at cbn4.com. I am Alien Christopher, saying goodbye.